What up, gang? It's your boy Zai back with another banger. Hey, what if I told you that the best plant in your tent wasn't actually the one you were supposed to keep? See, most breeders make the mistake of chasing looks or heavy yields in the first round. But advanced phenotype selection is way deeper. It's about hidden traits, foundation building, and long-term vision. And today, we're going to show you exactly what most people miss. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you heard me? Yeah, you know it. Turn up the leaf blower and the long boy. He smoked the sour. Should've been a hippie, should've been a shower. Prayer with no dread, black cock, oh yeah. Another thing, don't forget to join the Discord. So let's start with one of the biggest blind spots. Polygenic traits. See, most of the traits we care about, like terpene profile, resistance, or structure, aren't controlled by one gene. They're polygenic, meaning a combination of multiple genes influence the outcome. That's why in F1s, you might not even see the trait that you're looking to fix, but it's always still there. It's just not expressed. That's what I call a carrier pheno. See, some of the traits we want, the color, the structure, the nose, they don't always show up in that first generation. That's because many traits are polygenic, meaning multiple genes control them. You can select a plant that doesn't show a trait, but actually carries it. And when bred correctly, that trait will express in the next generation. See, the advanced breeder knows this saves time more than just the obvious winner. Sometimes, your long-term anchor comes from a subtle, stable pheno that's hiding traits you're gonna need down the line. See, when you're building a line, you don't just pick the most fire, loudest plant. You actually need what we call an anchor pheno. An anchor pheno is something that locks in that consistency. So, it might be the most boring looking, most weakest plant in the tent um, as far as looks, but it's disease resistant, it's stable, it clones well, and it responds consistently across environments. That's your rock. That's what you need. Flashier phenols might be used to outcross material or for terp stacking later, but your foundation, it has to be solid. You have to have two starting parents that complement each other based on traits. An anchor pheno is your rock. It's not always the flashiest, but it's stable, balanced, and repeatable. This pheno sets the foundation of your entire line. It's the one that you keep going back to, the one that delivers consistency in terp, structure, vigor, yield, athleticism. You already know. When you're line breeding or stabilizing, anchor phenos give you the blueprint. You can build from them because they don't drift. Another common mistake misreading the plants genetics because of environmental stress right a weak feed poor vpd inconsistent lighting can mask or exaggerate traits advanced selection requires standardized environments note taking data documentation recording in order to make sure that you have a standardized environment Carrier phenols are more like wild cards. They might not look impressive, but they're lanky, muted in smell, or structurally off. But genetically, they carry powerful, recessive, or hidden traits. These are the phenols that unlock rare combinations when paired with the right mate. Most beginners call these plants, not knowing they're tossing out a genetic gold mine. So if you are interested in more advanced selection, we talked about phenotype and phenol selection on a basic level, but when we think of more advanced levels and carrier phenols, anchor phenols, oh, this is the kind of work you'll be learning to do every day in Breeder University, man. Real selection, real results, real education, right? Enroll once, learn for a lifetime, man. We got students in virtual dorms, Greenhouse East, dorm room number one, shout out to y'all. First round of students for August session, man. You guys are making history. Make sure you enroll at Brina University if you already haven't. ZazaGenetics.com. You still got time to apply too. Session starts August 18th. August 18th, class will start. So make sure you are in orientation Monday, the 22nd, man. Round two, orientation. See you there. 
Listen, if you like the video, if it gave you a little bit of perspective, y'all know what to do, man. Drop some gorillas in the comments, you know, and let me know what you currently hunting for out there, man. What are you hunting for? Are you joining Breedy University? Can I expect to see you in class in August? And if you want to do a part two, man, where I break down how to organize your selection data, Breedy University style. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, man. You know, it helps us in the algorithm, man. Make sure you visit ZazaGenetics.com. Um, we still got a coupon code up for gear. So take advantage of that coupon code. I believe it's half off while Breeder University is still taking new students and applications. So other than that, man, I love you guys. Visit ACAffinity.com. Grab some grow equipment at a discounted price. If you use code Team Zaza, you get a discount and I earn a commission, man. So just another way to support, man. I love my supporters. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in class, man. Other than that, I'm out of here.